Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Sean and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I wanted to share a video that I've been working on for a little while now, which is setting up your Synology NAS as your Steam library. So if you're using a NAS already as a file server, um, as a Plex server or as a um, server for using it to edit videos like from Adobe Premiere, um, then this is just an extra added function that I've uh, recently discovered that you can do. So if you've got a large Steam library of a few hundred gigabytes and your NAS has plenty of available space, you can move your Steam library off your PC onto your NAS and you can launch all your games from your NAS and save you having to re-download them in the future if you do need to set up uh, maybe another computer with, with Steam. So uh, I'll be giving you a start to finish guide on how I've achieved this um, on a Windows 10 Pro PC, 64-bit and the latest version of the Synology um, NAS software. So I'll take you through all of that. I'll give you screen capture and voiceover through the whole video. Um, so let's begin. Okay guys, so now we're on to the next stage of the video, which is going to be me showing you how to set up your Synology NAS as your Steam library. So couple of things before I jump in is just want to show you what type of computer that I'm using. So we've got here, I'm using a 7700K with 16 gigabytes of RAM. This is a Windows 10 Pro PC and I'm running it as the 64-bit operating system. As far as my NAS, I'm just going to quickly load my NAS dashboard here. So we've got the DSM version which is 6.2 dash 23739 update 2. So this is the latest version as of the 28th of July 2018. Um, both my PC and the NAS are connected with a CAT6 cable to a gigabit switch so everything is hardwired just to make sure that we've got the best performance possible. Um, I have heard some people say to go up to a 10 gigabit connection but I really think that's you know, overkill and I think for most people in their homes they're not going to have a 10 gigabit connection. So um, as far as a wireless connection, uh, it is possible to do it over wireless, I, even though I really would recommend it um, as you're loading really large game files and over wireless you're not going to have always the best performance. So that's the Windows um, edition I'm using and this is the Synology DSM version that I'm using. So before we go any further into the setup, one thing you also need to know is the IP address. So assuming you know how to log into your NAS and configure it, I would recommend setting a static IP address. So my static IP address here is my local 192.168.1.10 port 5000. Um, so I'm logged in and where we're going to start is we're actually going to go into the little start menu up here for the NAS and we're going to go to what is called ISC SI Manager, iSCSI Manager. And we're going to click on the left hand side here called LUN um, and click create. So we're going to give essentially this type of connection a name. So we're going to call it Steam Library. So what a LUN connection essentially does is it makes your computer think that the NAS is like a physical hard drive inside of your computer, which is one of the requirements that Steam once it needs to know that the, the hard drive is actually part of the computer and not um, I guess virtually attached so you kind of have to trick it a little bit so we're going to create this LUN connection we're going to give it a name Steam Library we're going to tell it the location so we've just got the one volume here with I've got about four terabytes free and the capacity I'm going to give this about a 500 gigabyte capacity so that can always be changed later on if we need to um, thin provisioning, we're going to set no and we're going to go next. Then we're going to go ahead and create a new iSCSI target, create a new target and map it to this LUN, go next and name again. So I'm just going to keep everything consistent. I'm going to call it Steam Library. The IQN, we're going to leave that's automatically generated. We're going to go next. We don't need to enable chap or put a password in and we've got a quick summary here so Steam Library on volume 1 with a 500 gigabyte capacity everything else apart from the name is automatically generated so we're just going to leave that and click apply 
So that will save. And then the next step is we're going to open up an application on the window side. So we can minimize this window for the time being. We're going to go down to your start menu. We're going to type in ISCSI and you should get this little application here called iSCSI Initiator. So we'll open that application up and we're going to go to Discovery. Now I've already configured this um, once before just to make sure it works so I'll just remove it and we'll redo the process again. So we're going to go ahead and click on Discover Portal and we're typing in the IP address of our NAS. So 192.168.1.10 that's what my IP address is and the port we're going to leave that as the default 3260. Press OK and so we can see here we've got our NAS's local IP address and the port and now what we can do is we can go to target on the top tab and we can see that we've got here a target and it says that it's connected we've also got this other one here saying inactive now we should be able to connect to either one so I'm going to connect to this one here below it and press OK and now it says connected so this is the new connection that I've just created now the next step from here is we need to go back into the start menu and type in computer management and once we're in computer management we're going to go down to disk management and we can see that it's prompted us to initialize or format a logical disk so that 500 gigabyte um, partition if you like that we created on the NAS it thinks it's part of the computer it thinks that we've just added the virtual drive into the computer so it thinks it's actually physically there in my PC not just attached by um, a network cable so we're going to leave the tick on disk 3 and we're going to leave the partition as GPT press OK and so we can see here we've got my C drive which is where Windows installed I've got a physical hard drive, a one terabyte hard drive in my PC called D and then down the bottom we've got this unallocated 500 gigabyte um, partition. The one above is just a USB drive I have in so we're just going to ignore that. So we've got disk 3, 499 gigabytes unallocated. We're going to right click on this area which has the little lines going through it and we're going to click new simple volume. Then we're going to click next. We're going to give it the full um, volume space, so 500 gigabytes equates to you know, 500,000 megabytes or such. Click next. Going to give it a drive letter. So in this case, just double check that you don't um, use a drive letter um, already in use. So I've got C, D and E. So maybe what we'll do is we'll call this the X drive. Or maybe we can call it S for Steam um, if you want to keep it consistent. So we're going to go S and click on next. The volume or the file system we're going to leave is NTFS. Allocation size is default and then volume label you can call this whatever you like but to keep it all consistent I'm going to call it Steam Library again. Do a quick format because it thinks it's a physical drive so you need to sort of do a quick format just like a USB drive or a hard drive in order to use it. Click next. And remember, we're formatting something with technically no space. So it's just to create the volume so we can copy files to it. Click Finish, it gives you a quick summary. It says Formatting. And now we've got Steam Library with drive letter S. And if I minimize that and look at my PC settings, we can see that we've got the C drive where Windows is installed, my USB drive, my one terabyte hard drive, and now I've got this other drive that it thinks is physically in my computer called my Steam Library. The network location is just a mapped folder that I have. We can't actually use that um, as a Steam Library. I've already tried it, it doesn't work. There is some security and protocol elements that Steam doesn't like doing it that way. So that's why we need to use that iSCSI and LUN uh, system to create the library. So now that the library is there and we can copy files to it, the next step is we want to open up Steam. So let's do that now. And hopefully this is making sense to you. If you have any questions, just remember to 
leave them in the comments down below or reach out to me on Facebook or Instagram. So now that I've logged into Steam, I'm going to go up to the top left corner where it says Steam, click on Settings, click on uh, Downloads, and we've got here Steam Library Folders. So it's got the default library, which is on my C drive. We're going to add or choose a different library though, because this C drive's only got a small amount of free space on my SSD. So we're going to add a library folder. From the drop down up the top here, we should see S. That's where my Steam library is. I'm going to create a new folder called it Steam Library. Click OK. Press Select. And now we can see here the Steam Library has got 536 gigs of free space. So that's great. We're going to click Close. And we're going to go up to the library here. And I'm going to go to one of my games, one of my favorite games, PUBG. And we're going to go ahead and click Install. So this game I think is about 17,000 meg or 17 gigabytes. On my connection it will probably take about half that time, about 25 minutes to install. And it says choose the location for, insta uh, for install. So we're actually going to choose it to install under the Steam Library S drive. Click Next. Click I agree. And now it's creating the local game files and starting the download. So now if we were to open up the Steam Library on the PC, we can see that it's now creating all the subfolders it needs. And we can see that we've got PUBG, and eventually this will populate with all the game files and we can launch the game directly from the NAS. So pretty cool. Um, if you're like me and you have a really small SSD drive um, and you can't keep all your games there and you have a network um, drive like a Synology NAS um, with a huge capacity like my capacity on is about four terabytes then you know you can maybe allocate 500 gig or so for all of your games. So that's pretty much it. Not too difficult. It takes about 10 minutes to set up. Um, and the great thing is if you ever format your PC or you know upgrade or change your PC, your NAS will still have all those game files there. So you just need to redo the iSCSI setup on the new computer um, and launch all your games from the same um, NAS that you've always had. So thanks for watching this video. Hopefully you found this video informative and helpful. Hopefully it gives you a bit more confidence with moving your library from your local PC onto your NAS. Uh, if you do have any questions about this video, then leave them in the comments down below. If you did like this video, give me a thumbs up and consider hitting the subscribe button down below as well. Um, as I put videos usually out every week uh, related to tech guides and tutorials, uh, you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram as well. And if you want to purchase any of the gear that I use in my studio or to make this video, I'll leave links to that in the Amazon, uh, to the Amazon affiliate link down below as well. So thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.